In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Luminar 4's AI functionality to add moons and clouds and, well, create out of this world images like the one that you see here. What's up, my friends? My name is Pi, it is great to be back, and I'm excited because we're about to have a lot of fun. I'm gonna channel my inner Bob Ross, and we're gonna use Luminar 4's AI sky replacement and sky augment tools to create a image that looks like it wasn't even captured on this planet. Please don't talk to me about the journalistic integrity here. This is just for fun. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive in. So I want you guys to pause the video at this point. Make sure that you have downloaded the exercise file, which is this image that you see here. Once you've done that, go ahead and load it up. Now I shot this image actually a few years back on the uh, Great Salt Lake and there was these kayakers going across in kind of perfect formation. I was like, oh, that looks fantastic. My white balance is completely blue. I actually thought it looked better blue, but anyway, let's not worry about that quite yet. What we're gonna do first is I actually want to augment the sky. So we're gonna do everything just on one layer. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and jump into the creative palette. And the first thing that I wanna use is the AI sky replacement tool to go ahead and just add in a sky. So I'm gonna just flip through a couple different options here. I'm gonna choose a bright blue sky because well, it's kind of a, a bright blue scene. So I think that these would be pretty fitting. So this bright blue sky right here looks pretty good. And I'm not gonna worry too much about all the blend options yet. Let's go down to AI Sky Augment or Augment Sky. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add our moon. Should we add a moon? I mean, a giraffe doesn't really make sense for this photograph. It does hide it quite nicely behind the mountains, but no, we're not, we're not about that. We're about like these kayakers being on a different planet. Like they're on Hoth and they're kayaking. What you're gonna do is after the moon is added, Click the place object button. I'm gonna move this over here. We're gonna use the moon to actually frame our kayakers. So I'm gonna increase the size of this moon by grabbing a corner and placing it kind of right over this side. And I'll let it drop right behind the horizon line a little bit. So it kind of looks like the moon is kind of coming up a little bit, okay? We can perfect it in just a moment, but we're gonna add it right there. Now, Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start kind of adjusting the blends of each of these. So for the moon, I want it to be a little bit less visible, almost like it's kind of behind the clouds, right? I'm gonna turn the warmth up so the moon warmth sort of matches the sky and the clouds. So we're gonna bring it up probably about to like right here. And do we want it to relight the entire scene? Well, it's not gonna have a huge impact either way if we do this, but this is gonna essentially relight the scene using whatever that object is. I'm not gonna worry about that too much because it's not gonna make a big difference here. What I'm gonna do is go to my edit mask and we're gonna choose the brush because I'm gonna choose the erase option. And I just wanna make sure that right here in that little edge, it kind of disappears off the horizon lines a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of refine it a little bit, make sure that it's disappearing properly. Okay, this looks fantastic. So now let's go back to the sky, okay? So we're gonna go back to the sky tool and I'm gonna change the way that it's blending on the horizon just a little bit. I'm gonna make it blend a little bit more subtly. Probably about like right here-ish, okay? It defaults to about here. I'm pulling it up just a little bit more, okay? We could also adjust the horizon position if we feel like it's not quite in the right position and it might not be. It might have come in just a little bit on the low side so I might bring it back to like say right here so we can see the rest of those mountains right there and maybe continue to adjust the horizon blend a little bit. And don't worry, we can kind of pull it off the, uh, we can kind of fix the, the blend on the, the moon in just a second as well. Okay, this is starting to look pretty convincing. So I'm liking that. If we want to relight scene. I do want the clouds to have some effect over the scene, but I like where it defaults to. Um, sometimes I end up tuning it back just a little bit this time I'm gonna go forward just a little bit. So I don't like taking it up to 100 though. I feel like it kind of creates a, a look that's not super convincing if you go up too high. And you know what? Let's revisit relighting after we have um, adjusted our haze. Cause this is the next thing that I like to do is I like to pull up the haze to sort of fade the skies a little bit. This tool, this tool is actually there. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it because of me. I suggested this idea to the team and the team was cool enough to actually do it. I said, it'd be great if we could blend the opacity of the sky off a little bit. And they built in this atmospheric haze. I'm also gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna brighten up the sky a little bit so it again kind of matches the overall brightness of the image. So what I'm looking at is I wanna get this transition where it looks like the brightness up top sort of matches down below. That to me is the most, 
the, the biggest reason why something doesn't look convincing is because of that uh, darkness of the sky. Sometimes we end up leaving the sky too dramatic and it looks like it doesn't quite fit the scene that we photographed it in. So this is looking good. So let's go ahead and just tweak now the relight and see if we want less or more of this now that we have a brighter kind of sky. And I think I do want it to be a little bit up higher, just about there. And I do want to affect the blending and the position just a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm going to bring up the blend a little bit. Bring up the position to about right here. Just, oh, ah, 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 right. don't, right there, 14. Okay, so that's starting to look good. Now I'm going to flip back to my moon and I'm just going to tweak that mask a little bit too. So go back to the brush, erase, and I'm just going to erase a little bit from where this is hitting the mountain right there. Okay, that looks fantastic. Now this is super fun. Let's look at the before and the after on this. That looks cool. Okay, so from here, this is where you guys can do whatever you want. So if you want to go back to the essentials, you could actually aim for a warmer scene. So if I want to warm up the entire scene, I can warm it up. If I want to cool it down, I can cool it down. I kind of like where it's at right here, um, but I am going to add maybe a little bit of smart contrast to the image. Let's start up here and let's kind of dial our way back. So I like it right about here. I think for shadows, there's not a lot of deep, dark shadows, but I do kind of like the idea of having this be like this ethereal kind of bright image. So I might bring the shadows up a bit. Yeah. Now these guys are like, they're like freaking kayaking across some planet with a gigantic moon. It looks cool. All right. We can also go in and tweak color. So this is the fun thing. If you go to an advanced side, you could select the existing color and I can sh shift it over to whatever tone that I like. So if I want this to be more purple, I can make it more purple. If I want it to be more green, I can do that as well. So what I'm going to do is actually shift it a little bit towards the green side, not a ton. And I might pull a tiny bit of the saturation out to kind of give it this subtle softness to it. Maybe even bring up a little bit of the luminance to about here. This looks really fun. Now let's look at the before and after. I think that looks super cool. Really fun edit, really great way of getting to these images that people are like, that's crazy. You had to have Photoshop that and you're like, no, nope, no Photoshop. Just a couple simple clicks in Luminar and I'm, I'm done and I'm good to go. And well, I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully this gives you a little look and idea into how to be creative and have fun with these AI tools that Luminar gives us. And meanwhile, be sure to subscribe to the channel you guys can comment below. I love reading the comments just to see ideas on future episodes. So comment on what you guys would like to learn next, what you want me to see me do, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.